Hey guys, we're here on the uh, Xtool D8, uh, the D8BT actually. The D8 is the exact same thing. Uh, the only difference is the D8 has a cable to where you're tethered to the vehicle. BT is a Bluetooth, so you're just Bluetooth. But one of the viewers that watched uh, my videos on a pretty regular basis, he made a, a good recommendation that I should do a video on the graphing abilities of the D8. And, and I thought that was a great idea because I think I've only done a couple um, videos where, where I even used the graph or, or the graphing abilities. And there's some, there's some good things about the D8 graphing abilities, and there's some drawbacks. Um, so we're here on my GMC uh, Sierra, so we're just going to get in here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through uh, the issues and the good things about the graphing abilities of this particular scan tool. Now, a lot of people seem to think that you can only you can only display um, a graph on top of each other, the combined graph, so they're they're overlaid on one another. That's that's not the case. Um, and I'll show you all the different things you can do, and and some pretty cool features um, that you can do also with the scan tool. So basically, all I'm going to do, I'm going to get in here to live data. And we're going to select uh, some data pins that I can control, like basically stepping on the gas pedal, so you can see some movement. Um, so we'll do engine speed. Uh, what else can we do? Mass airflow, probably be a good one. Uh, we can do engine load. Pedal position. How many is that? Is that four? I'm going to need six, and you'll see why here in just a minute. And I specifically want to do the O2 sensors, the upstream O2 sensors, because that's that's the one drawback to the X tool that I've found so far. And you'll see what I mean. So I've just selected those data pads. I'm going to hit the custom button. And what that's going to do is that's going to put those six uh, data pads up on the screen. And as you can see in list mode, you know, you can sit there and monitor all the uh, – all the functions, and you can see that they're, uh, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty reactive. Now, if I select uh, any one of the little arrows there on the side, you can see the graph, uh, you know, pop up, and you can, you know, you can do that on any one, and you can see the, the graphing ability that way, and you've got your x-axis and your y-axis to where you can speed up uh, and change the, the value over here on the right. So the y-axis changes the value over on the, not on the right, on the left. And then the speed is right there. So you can kind of slow it down, speed it up a little faster. You know, so that's a pretty good function. If you hit these icons, you've got like a little meter that I don't think anybody uses. You can put in a value. Um, well, the same button. So let's go back to graph. Of course, you can hit full screen if you want full screen effect. If you hit combine, that's where you're going to combine whatever graphs or whatever data pitch you've got up on the list. Now, this is a pretty cool feature. You know, if you was looking at both O2 sensors, you could actually lay them on top of one another, which we both got down at the bottom. And if you Look up at the top, you've kind of got a legend telling you what color data pids or what color graph uh, is which data pid. You hit that little arrow uh, right there, you hit it, I can. That'll go away and it just gives you just the graph. And again, over here, you got your X and Y uh, axis that you can control the, the speed and the value of the left uh, of the range. So if I this exit out of that, if I hit graph, you can actually have six graphs up at one time. Now this is where the downfall is. If you look at the O2 sensors, they're on a scale of 20 volts. So whenever I give it a little gas, you don't hardly see any movement. Now if you uh, and you can 
change that value somewhat. So if I let's go back to uh, this mode, let's go here to just graphing one O2 sensor. I can hit X1, and if you watch the scale value over here on the left, now it's 16 volts. It was 20, it went to 16, and now I hit X, now it's saying X3, now it's 12, a 12 volt scale, which is still better than the 20 volt scale, but that needs to be down on a 1 volt scale. Because um, you can see that you just get very little movement uh, out of it. So you can't really tell, you know, real well how much, you know, how much movement there is there. You know, a uh, O2 sensor generally works on between 1 and uh, 0 and 1 volt scale. So that's the one downfall of the X tool. They need to, even whenever you go to custom, so if I put in zero for the minimum and we'll put in one for the maximum, you see the scale over here is still on a 12 volt scale. If I hit X, the, the, the Y button here, I got X1, X2, X3, it's still 12 volt. It puts a little red marker there, but it doesn't drop that scale down to between one and, and uh, uh, between zero and one volt like it should, in my opinion. So, but you can, the, 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 major, the, the main thing about this video is showing that you can display six graphs at one time, uh, which is a useful feature. And you can actually, uh, if you hit data export, I want to show you a pretty cool deal. And you can sit there and, and you, know, you can watch your graphing. Then you hit data export again. You hit OK. There's the storage path. There's the, you can change the file name. If you hit preview, you've actually got a view of what your graphs look like, and you can actually change exactly where you want to to see, you know, what uh, you know what values you're at, I guess. And then you got over here on the the left all your uh, information. So you know, this is a pretty cool. The uh, little feature uh, of the X tool. So let's go back, exit, yes. Of course, you're back to your live uh, data reading. But yeah, like I say, the one, there is something that I think they have fixed too. And it, I don't know if it was because of my request or not. I did write them about this. But if you look up here at the uh, mass airflow sensor, if you had your settings set to imperial settings, the mass airflow sensor reading, instead of grams per second, it was pounds per minute. And when you try to read mass airflow readings in pounds per minute, let's just go to the list here so that we can see some values. Uh, instead of grams per second, if you're reading those in, in grams, uh, pounds per minute, you would get very little movement. Nobody reads mass airflow readings in pounds per minute. Well, if you went and changed it to so what you would have to do is go and change all the values to metric, and then the mass airflow rating would be grams per second. Well, then now your RPM, actually, I think the RPM stayed the same, but all your other ratings would be metric also. So you'd constantly have to switch back and forth. The one thing that I liked about my Snap-on is you could select individual uh, data pits to read certain values. So the mass airflow was always grams per second. And everything else, if I wanted to be imperial, was imperial. You know, so your pressure, your PSI was imperial instead of kilopascals and, and all that good stuff. So they did change that. And I, I'm glad they did because I've got imperial selected. But as you can see, the mass airflow uh, reading is in grams per second. But anyway, about the graphing, uh, you can clearly see that the graphing, you know, the graphing's not bad. And you can display more than one graph uh, at a time. So, you know, here's, you know, here's one, one graph. You, if you wanted to see it, if you wanted to see, uh, you know, an O2 sensor. The O2 sensor graph is, the, to me, the biggest issue because of the scale. You know, you can only go, uh, let's move that up to uh, X3. It's a, it's a 0 to 12 volt scale, and it, it, it needs to be a 0 to 1 volt 
and then like at zero to five volt, if you've got a lambda sensor that you're trying to read, because I think they work between one and five volts. Uh, but most your O2 sensors are going to be zero to one volt, and that's what that scale needs to be able to read. But anyway, uh, the graphing isn't that bad. Uh, like I say, let's go ahead and hit graph, and there's all six of your graphs. Uh, you can see the lower left for the uh, bank one sensor, one O2 sensor. Uh, the red line is where I did the custom values. Uh, I put in zero to one volt. It should have made that graph zero to one volt instead of zero to 20, like it's showing. Uh, the, the red line, I, I don't need that red line down there to tell me that that's, you know, zero to one volt. I need the whole the whole scale to be zero to one volt. Uh, so Xtool, if you're watching this, that would be uh, one thing that if you guys could fix, that would just make the scan tool that much better. Uh, it, but like I say, for the price that you're paying for this, man, you can't you can't expect the the perfect scan tool like you like you would expect if you spent thirty five hundred on a scan tool. At, at thirty five hundred dollars, I would expect all this stuff to be the the best it could possibly be, you know, or at least close to it. The few little drawbacks that you do have on a you know a, a lower price scan tool, you either got to live with it or you've got to up up it and and buy a, a more expensive scan tool. Uh, I don't think the graphing abilities is that bad on, on this X tool. Uh, I just I haven't had that big of a problem with them. Um, usually, what the way I do it is I just if I need to see the graph, I just hit the little arrow and I just bring the one single graph up. Um, but the that was the downstream, so they don't hardly move at all if they're working. Um, but yeah, the problem that I've noticed is the the graph, the uh, scale on the O2 sensor. Uh, that's really the only problem I've had with the graphing ability of the X tool is just the scale for just the O2 sensors. Everything else seems fine. Like if you go up here to engine speed, um, you know it starts off at zero to 600. You rev it up, it automatically adjusts. Now it's just went to a zero to 2,000 scale. You know I don't have a problem with that graph right there. And if you hit, you know, X2, X3, it kind of does the same thing. You can go to your custom uh, where you can input whatever value you want. If you hit the, the X axis, you can see how it's just kind of slowed, slowed it down so, you know, it doesn't go across the screen quite as fast. If you do that again, you've got, you know, X3. If you want to start it all over again, you hit refresh and it resets everything, the, or the little circle looking thing. But, uh, you know, that's usually the way I look at the graph. Uh, O2 sensors, a lot of times you do want to compare those to each other. And, you know, let me select some of these, and we're just going to do O2, just to show you if you guys want to look at both O2 sensors. Um, We'll hit custom to that. So we got both our O2 sensors listed up there. Now you can do the combine, and you can just watch them. Kind of work, you know, on top of one another. Make sure they're kind of, you know, doing the same thing that they you know, are doing what they should be doing. Let's exit out of that. Now let's hit the graph. And there's both the, the O2 sensors and side-by-side uh, -side graph. That'd be nice if... On this screen, when you do show multiple graphs, they are all this size right here. So you can do up to six graphs on this page, but even when you only do two, it would be nice if one graph was below the other and they were as big as they could be going across the screen. That that would be nice. Uh, but I can live with this. Uh, what I really can't live with is the 0 to 20 scale. This, to me, is almost, it's almost useless for the O2 readings because of how little you can actually view the movement uh, of the O2, uh, you know, voltage going from zero to one volt on a zero to twenty scale, you just—it's—it's it's kind of hard to tell, you know, if the O2s are actually going rich and lean, you know, the way you 
the way you would want to be able to see it on a zero to one volt scale. Hopefully that made sense. I, I know I'm probably not explaining this as good as possible, but we'll just take a look here. Like I've said before, you see the zero to 20 volt scale over here on the left and how small the reading is down at the bottom. That's because the O2 sensor works between zero and one volt. And I can make that a zero to 12 volt, which makes it a little bit better, but it still needs to be zero to one volt so that you can get a nice, good uh, reading and be able to see it you know, easier than what we're seeing it here. But that's the one drawback. That's the only drawback that I've really found. That and the fact that whenever you do the multiple graphs, it doesn't, if you only have two, which most of the time you do only have two graphs going. Sometimes you might want to see three or four, you know, but most of the time as far as graphing, you've already kind of troubleshot something down to a certain thing, and you're just wanting to see how it looks on a graph, see if it gives you any more details. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I've already determined that, you know, I possibly have one bad O2 sensor. A lot of times I just pull that one graph up of that one O2 sensor, and I can tell just by looking at that graph whether the O2 sensor is going rich or lean the way it should. Now, sometimes I'll bring up another one just to see if the other one's, you know, working the same way, but uh, usually, but very, very seldom do I pull up more than two graphs at a time. But anyway, this is the graphing ability of the X tool. It's got a few uh, cons to it, you know, uh, not a few. It's got a couple, um, but for the most part, I, I think it works great. It works a lot better than other scan tools that I've. There's some scan tools. The graphing is so awful, you, you, it's almost useless to even try to use use them. But on this, I think the graphing is is plenty satisfactory, um, and Anyway, I'm done. You guys take care. We'll see you in the next one.